Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon, and I'm going to be filming a client reading. Today's reading is the Astrological You reading. This is a 12 card spread where I will go through each of the 12 houses um, and basically just use the cards to give you some insight about yourself. This is a reading that I suggest people look into if you want to really, really dive deep into um, just about yourself and what you have to offer for yourself. <laughs> so it'll bring up different messages. Um, we'll see what the cards have to say. For your reading in particular, I'm going to be using the Witch's Tarot. It is a tarot deck that I have purchased not too long ago and I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, so I will be using the Witch's Tarot and then before we get started, I like to shuffle the cards once for every letter of your name, which is my way of connecting with your energy. So as I do so, just be patient with me. Move my crystal over. Okay, so this first card is going to resemble the first house, and this is your self-image, your personality, your body, your ambition. The Two of Wands. So the Two of Wands to come up for you as your self-image and your um, personality is you are definitely somebody that is always searching for answers. You're always um, wondering what <laughs> what's going to come next. You are somebody that likes to look forward into the future a lot. Um, you um, are always just thinking about the, the next step. I do feel like that is that does, <laughs> knowing um, from other readings that I've done for you in the past, um, I do feel like this does um, really reflect who you are. You are a thinker in the future. You do consider the future a lot um, more so than your present. I do think that um, this card indicates that you don't pay as much attention to the present as you do in the future and just wondering what your next move will be, where you should go from here, and so forth. The second house. This is your value system, your financial attitudes. The nine of wands. So uh, you have a financial attitude of definitely being on the defense. So you are definitely protective of your finances. You are very, um, I do think that you you handle them rather well. You don't let other people, um, <laughs> um, like let's say, for example, if you are a bargain shopper, you're not going to let other people ruin that for you. So I do feel like um, you take your finances very seriously. Um, I also just feel that as being this in this type of this type of person, um, this might bring a bit of a competition with you. So you might be competing with other people um, where they stand as far as their jobs and in their line of work. You might constantly um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, compare. You're comparing yourself to these people a lot. So I do feel like instead of just standing your own ground and being happy with where you're at right now with your life and your job, um, you are constantly sizing yourself up to other people and their experiences um, and wanting what they have. So that could be a bit of a, of just a bit of a little bit of a downfall for you. Um, just being so focused and so feeling strongly about your finances and your where you stand as a, um, a with your job that you do compare yourself to others and that can be quite stressful to be honest. Um, and and it can lead you to not being happy and not being satisfied with what you have at this moment. So I just wanted to put that out there. 
Um, number three, this is the third house. This is the way you communicate. This is how you think, you learn, and also can talk about siblings and neighbors. So you got the four of pentacles. So for the way that you communicate, you learn, I do feel like you are very um, protective, <laughs> which also stands, you know, with this, um, with, with the way you feel about your finances and whatnot. You're a very protective person about the people that are very close to you and the people that you care about. You have a lot um, of you don't like you won't allow other people to mistreat or mistalk about somebody that is special to you um as far as neighbors and whatnot go i do feel like you keep to yourself so you you are not very um social with the neighbors um and the neighbors might observe you as being somebody who is not maybe not a hermit but you just you just keep to yourself you're not you're not one to get in the business of everybody else around you you just get you go home you close the door you keep the windows closed you don't bother anybody. You keep to yourself. So that's that's the impression I'm getting from the Four of Pentacles. Um, communication. So the way that you communicate, um, I do feel like you're very uh, a me, 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 I, I, I person. So there's a lot of us, and I'm one of those that is, um, I am, um, <laughs> I, I, here you go. <laughs> I'm guilty of this too, where everything you talk about, it usually tends to be about yourself. And that is okay. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything negative. It just means that you you enjoy um, using yourself as an example when you're expressing the way you feel um, situations. If you use yourself as an example a lot, it's always it always just the conversation usually results around you. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, number four, the fourth house. This is your your parents, your roots, your domestic life, and family life. You got the four of wands in reversed. So this can indicate me knowing your past a little bit um, because I did the reading for um, about your father. So I do feel like, you know, this is an indication of that where um, the dynamic of family because four, four wands um, is always a symbol of um, a stability <laughs> and, you know, it's a celebration. So usually it's thought of as a marriage card um, because it's in reverse. I do see that the family life wasn't quite put together. So there wasn't always the four pieces, the four pillars to make the connection of stable, a stable home life. I do feel like that was an indication there um, that perhaps your upbringing was a little bit different than people that you grew up with. So other children um, that you grew up with may have had the mother and father marriage dynamic and, you know, it was a happy family, so to speak, so to speak, not saying that your family life was not happy, but I do feel like it wasn't completely connected to be considered the norm, quote unquote. Um, and then, you know, knowing just what I know about, about your father, um, I do feel like this just indicates that, that, it's in reverse, the, the, the lack of stability, he's not, he's no longer present. Um, and what else is this? Your parents, your roots, your domestic life and family life. So I just do feel like um, your background, like where you come from with your family life, it does, if you, whether you believe it or not, it does represent what you bring to the future and in your present. So your experiences with your family life, your experiences in your childhood growing up is keys to figuring out why and who you are now. Um, and that's where shadow work comes in. So anybody who's watching, <laughs> anyone who's watching this, if you guys are curious about how shadow work works, it is about diving back into your childhood um, and seeing where problems arise and where you started developing a certain way of thinking and your thought process and whatnot. This is where it comes from. Um, the fifth house is creativity, affairs of love, hobbies, social life, and children. So this is the social card. <laughs> and you got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. So social life, um, Ten of Pentacles is typically a family card, which is kind of funny that you got that. You can see upright. It's a family card. Um, but because it's in reverse, tells me that there may have been family struggles. And we just got done talking about that with the Four of Wands. Be, so your experience growing up 
with your childhood was probably experiencing um, a little bit of a rocky childhood, rocky, um, just a rocky family dynamic, whether there was arguing going on there or there was um, just an absence in um, family altogether, miscommunication, no communication. It could have been a lot of different things. The lack of affection, um, that could have been a, a play. Now, when we think about in terms with the fifth house is your creativity, your affairs of love, hobbies, social life, this can play a huge part. And I do feel for you personally, when it comes to searching for love, because of the past of your family dynamic being the way it was, I do feel like you do struggle with finding the appropriate type of love. Um, and so I do feel like that seeking love and seeking romance in a relationship is very um, stressful for you because you you want what you observe other people to have. But sometimes I think because of the way you were brought up in your past, you feel like you are not deserving of it. And that's going to be based on intuition as well as what the cards are coming up saying. I do feel like you're very disappointed a lot with what you are looking for with love. Um, and that is because you don't feel you're deserving of something good. Okay. Number six, this is your job, your responsibilities, your work habits, your relationship, and your health. You got the hermit in reverse. So for job and responsibilities, like the hermit in reverse can signify you are more of a I think you can work around people because the hermit, if it was upright, I would say, no, you're definitely a solitary type of a worker. You would rather spend your time alone, but because it isn't reversed, I do feel that you can work with other people. You can communicate with others and be social, but at the same time, I do feel like it, it does be for you. And so this is a time where you can be social and you can be around people and working with people, but at the same time, when the, when the clock strikes, the time for you to go home and it's time for you to relax and um, decompress, I do feel like you, you welcome it wholeheartedly. Like it is definitely something that you need after a while, after a long day, um, which a lot of us are like that. But I do feel like you can make it fit where you communicate and work well with others, but then there's just a time where you just want to, okay, I need, leave me alone. I need to go home and be by myself. So I do feel that's you. <laughs> um, for the other piece, let me see. Um, your work habits, your relationship, and your health. So relationship-wise, the hermit in reverse can show that you still have some um, searching, soul searching, learning to do. I do feel like this is um, this has to do with some shadow work to really learn more about your past and yourself and why you were bringing that into your future. Um, and then as far as um, health goes, the hermit in reverse can show um, definitely a, um, you're not quite, uh, how am I going to say this? You're not, um, you don't accept a lot of, of yourself. Um, there's a lot of things that you want to change. Um, the hermit upright would indicate, you know, soul searching but in reverse I'm gonna I'm saying as with the body I do feel and with an email I've received recently from you um I do feel yes <laughs> you have a definite um where you don't accept and you don't you don't like the way that you look um your body and you just have just just you have reservations about it there's just things that you just would like to change physically um, and I do feel like in your mind, you feel this will make you happier, but I do feel like shadow work would be very beneficial to you to figure out, you know, what's going on, what, what happened in the past, like what is, what is such an influence to you from the past into now that is making you so unhappy. Um, number six, no, that was number six. <laughs> this is the seventh, number seven, seventh house. The business and romantic relations and how you interact with people. Six of Swords. Okay. So I do want to say the first word that came to mind when this card flipped over was escape. Or um, you're just definitely somebody who runs away from things. You run, you run away from situations. You run away from people. If something, it gets too, um, too good to be true, you'll run away from it. You will depart. 
Um, so I do feel like that's an indication of the way that you handle certain relationships. Um, as far as your interaction with people, um, I think it's like a take it or leave it thing with you. So if they don't quite live up to par with what you want, you will, you'll walk away. Um, it's either, and you, and you have an attitude with a lot of people where this is me. If you don't like it, then get out. If you do, then, you know, let's keep going. So I just, I do feel like you have a take it or leave it attitude. Um, number eight, the eighth house. This is jointly controlled money assets and obligations. So you have the five of swords in reversed. Isn't that a pretty card? <laughs> So five of swords in reverse can be kind of more of like, um, I see it as a power card. So upright would show a lot of, um, like you see the poor, um, dragonfly. He's kind of being challenged with all of the swords and whatnot. I do see this as the dragonfly getting his revenge. If you guys can, you, can you kind of tell the difference? Um, so for jointly controlled assets and obligations, I do feel like when you have obligations to do stuff, when you have responsibilities and people are counting on you for something, you do fall through. You are not a flaky person. You are not a person that doesn't keep you their word. I do feel like you you definitely fall through with promises that you make to people and you make sure that you are always available when they need you. Now, are people always available to you when you need them? Probably not. <laughs> and that that just unfortunately that's that's how it goes with a lot of us. Um if we put most of our time and attention on devoting ourselves to other people, a lot of times they don't give it back. And that's just because that's just how it is. And it's very frustrating because um, <clears throat> this isn't easy. It's not easy to always be available and to always be able to battle other people's battles and problems for them. If you in return are not going to receive what you need back when you need it. So I do feel like um, you are definitely not a flaky person, definitely a friend that people would want because be loyal to them and, and you will you will allow yourself to go forward in situations even though you may not want to. And I do feel like, you know, those are good traits to have, but at the same time, you need to make sure that people are reciprocating back to you what you give to them. It shouldn't always be a one-way street. Ninth house, spirituality, religion, and higher education. And you got the four of cups in reversed. So spirituality and religion, I do feel like you were very spiritual. Um, the four of cups upright would indicate not. I don't know if it's going to focus. Focus. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Four of Cups upright would indicate not being receptive to receiving whatever the message is coming forth. But the reverseness of the card, I see it as opposite. I do see it as you have a huge, immense um, need for spirituality. It's very important to you. Um, I think you are connected um, with your spirituality on different levels that other people may not be able to understand. So in, a, in other words, this may make you more of a weird, looking as a, li a little bit of a weird person. People who don't understand your connections with spirit don't understand you. Um, and so that can kind of cause a little bit of, you know, discomfort to be around certain people. People who are a little bit more closed-minded than others don't get it. Um, but I do feel, yes, you are a very spiritual person and you're very sensitive. Um, the 10th house, this is your public image, your career and relationships with authority figures. So let's think of this card as how you interact with bosses or supervisors or people who are um, higher on the totem pole. <laughs> you got the ace of swords. So <laughs> you are definitely somebody that people can communicate with. You are very um, confident when you speak. I do feel that that is very necessary to have. It's a good trait to have. Somebody will look up to you as, wow, she's a very good speaker. She knows what she wants. She's not afraid to speak her mind. Definitely the Ace of Swords is all of that. You're also a very um, much of a thinker and a free spirit. Um, and I also want to point out um, remember there was a, the time when you emailed me about feathers. I love that this, you know, this came up, the bird here. 
Um, I just, I just wanted to point that out. That, ju that just came to mind as I was flipping the card over. So <laughs> I wanted to just show you that. Um, but I just, I do feel the way that you communicate, you know, when to be mature, you know, when it's important to be, um, professional. And that's a good thing because with whether whatever your line of work is, you do know the difference of being mature and professional. And then when you're at home and you're going through some, you know, some weird random stuff, you know how to separate the two lives. Um, now we are at number, number 11, the 11th house. This is friendships, hopes, wishes, and goals. Five of pentacles. So I feel like intuitively looking at the card, I feel like your goals and your, your friendships and all that, it's run dry. Um, I do feel that there is a need to put more life into this piece of your life. Um, friendships may have kind of fizzled away due to differences in opinion. Um, separation, just, we naturally just detach from people. But I do feel like this area of your life does need a little bit more um, love. Because as you can see with the, the image on the card, the tree is, you know, it's dead. It's the cold of winter time. Um, but the pentacles are the ones that are golden that look like they're giving life to the picture, which tells me that you do want to re-spark friendships. <sighs> friendships, hopes, your goals that you have, you want to kind of add life to that. Those are areas in your life that have kind of fizzled out that you're looking to revive, and I do feel like that's important. So definitely setting some new goals for yourself. Definitely getting in touch with old friends that you've missed and maybe you haven't communicated with in a while. This is all important. Um, and then for the last card, your 11th house or your 12th house, this is you, your inner self, your dreams, and your secrets. You got the chariot. I love that we are ending this reading with a major card. The chariot is, um, it's, he's a very courageous, um, ready for battle type of a card. He is both light and dark, as you can see with the two horses. The colors of the two horses is white and black. So he is definitely very much in touch with his lightness and his darkness. He sees both sides to every situation. Um, and he leads, if you can tell, the horses don't have the reins where you know, you, you're um, holding on to something to, to keep them in control. They are doing their own thing, and he is trusting that. So he is a very trusting, a very... Um, sure of himself and comfortable person. I do feel like you have this ability. This is in you. I do feel like you allow other people or situations to kind of let everything else crumble. Um, and, and, and it, you, you allow other people to put things into your head of things that you need more of, or that you need to improve of. Um, but I do feel like in deep down inside, you know, you are definitely strong and you're definitely a daredevil and you're definitely able to, um, take on a lot. You're a very strong, strong person. And I will be the first person to tell you that if you've never been told that before. So I do wish you all of the best. I hope that this reading helped you. I hope that this shed some light on some things. Um, if you have any questions, please, you have my email. Reach out to me, love. I enjoy working with you. Thank you so much again for choosing this reading. And if anybody is interested, this is the Astrological You reading. It's available in my shop and I will leave a link to my website below. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.